This carbon fiber, full suspension, fat tire electric bike is called the Hay Bike Hero and it is brand new. It is available in either a mid drive or a hub drive. And regardless of which motor you get, they claim 35 miles an hour is the top speed. 36. Yeah, dude, this thing's not backing off. So a big bike with big power packed into a lightweight, strong carbon fiber frame, nine speeds on the shifter, and a step-through frame or a trapeze frame. Tell you more about that in a minute. So let's crack the Hay Bike Hero open, run it through the tail happy circuit, run it up the 20% grade, test the range, test the brakes, test the acceleration, test the top speed, test it all, and see whether or not this e-bike is worth the money. And here's what it looks like when you get out of the box. Hey bike hero. So first and foremost, the most significant thing about this bike is it is carbon fiber. The entire frame weighs in at only 2.8 kilograms. So only about six pounds on this frame. And if you've ever been on a fat tire e-bike, you know weight is the enemy on these things. The carbon fiber frame is 36% lighter than aluminum frames and stronger. And another significant thing is this is a full suspension e-bike that is a step through frame. Most full suspension fat tire e-bikes are only high step having that big bar up here, making it much harder to get on and off the bike. The bike we have here today is the step through version, but they also have what is known as a trapeze version. And you can see there's a little extra bar right there. So you get a little bit higher of a step, but maybe a little bit more rigidity in the frame. Either way, you get that full suspension. And the rear suspension is known as horse link suspension. It's a particular type of four bar rear suspension connecting the swing arm to the carbon fiber frame through a linkage that gives you more leverage. The rear suspension is an air shock. We'll get a closer look at it here soon. I can see right away there is an adjustment for the air. So you'll be able to tune this to your weight and riding preferences. And as mentioned, this is the hub drive version. So we get a 48 volt, 1000 watt rear hub motor. However, this e-bike is available in a mid drive, which if you get the mid drive variation of this e-bike, the motor will be mounted right there. There's a whole laundry list of pros and cons of each, but in general, the mid drive will have more torque, 160 newton meters of torque. So much better for towing and climbing hills. Whereas the hub drive motor has a little bit less torque, but it's a much simpler operation. You don't gotta worry about changing your gears. That's basically a topic for a whole different video. But in general, think if you get the mid drive motor, you're gonna send that power through the chain to the gears and you can utilize the gears, be able to get more torque to the wheel, but the hub drive motor in general, which we have here is a much simpler operation. Regardless of which motor option you go with, we get RSX hydraulic brakes on 180 millimeter rotors on both the rear wheel as well as the front wheel. 26 inch tall wheels by four inches wide, knobby tread optimal for off-road riding, branded Chow Yang with the hippo skin. And of course we get a suspension front fork. On the right stanchion, we get a basic open and lock adjustment with no micro adjustment in between and a set of keys so we can pop this frame integrated battery up the bottom of our carbon fiber frame that just sounds nice real carbon fiber and it is a 48 volt 18 amp hour 864 watt hour energy capacity battery it's got a little switch here to turn it on and off usb port and the website has it listed as certified with ul 2849 TUV. So let's get this thing on the scale. See what it clocks in at here. Oop, over 11. So we gotta get it on the big boy scale. We're gonna need this to weigh the bike anyway. It says 11.2 pounds. We'll weigh the whole thing after I get that wheel on there. It's listed as 75 pounds, which is actually pretty light for a bike of this size, 26 by four inch with a pretty big battery. I was actually kind of surprised when I was moving this box up here. I was like, dang, that, that's pretty light, man. I mean, it is carbon fiber. What kind of seat are we gonna be sitting on? Hey bike. So it's wide, it's got some little Dimples up here on the top, a little bit of shape to it. Definitely got some squish to it. Quick adjustment so you can easily raise and lower the seat post. Got some numbers on the back there. We'll pop those handlebars on in a minute, but first, let's take a look at this box. Check out our charger. Boom, the big boy charger, four amps output. So if this 18 amp hour battery was drained to empty and you charge it at a four amp charge rate, it's about four and a half hours to charge from completely empty to completely full. So we'll top this hay bike off while we build it. This little red light will turn green when it's full. And of course you can charge it either on the bike or off the bike. The other box has pedals and tools. Here's the pedals we get. They are metal, have a little bit of cleats to them. Handlebars are easy peasy to install compared to most bikes. Because the handlebars are already on the stem, you don't have to mess with any of those four bolts. Don't ever use a drill here. Use the tools they gave you. Ooh, that display looks nice. We'll check it out here in a minute. But first, let's get this headlight on. And the front wheel. Dang, dude, this bike is lighter. I can tell from one hand. 
front wheel securely nuts on. So there is no quick release lever on this e-bike. Makes it a little bit harder to pop this wheel off for both the good guys and the bad guys. What I'm saying is this is a little bit less prone to theft. Headlight on. And this e-bike comes with no fenders or racks to help keep the weight down. Handlebars are mostly flat. A little bit of rise on them. We get round rubber grips. We'll try this button out in a few. Pedal assist levels. On off switch. We'll pop the battery in here in a minute. Try that display. And on the right we get nine speeds on the Shimano Altus shifter. And of course the all important quarter twist throttle on the right. Freeze up your left hand to use bike signals if you're going to rely on the throttle. And RSX hydraulic brake levers. Feel nice to the touch. And I'll show you the other side in a minute. But first we're going to weigh this bike. How much do I weigh? Clocking in at 197.6 today. Not too bad. And I'll grab this bike, pick it up, step on the scale. Oh yeah, it's got a little weight to it. I mean it is a fat tire bike. And step it on the scale while holding the electric bike. 263.8. Dang, so that'd be 66.2 for just the bike, no battery. And then what did we say the battery was? 11.4. So according to my measurements, right around 77 pounds on the C bike. That is for a full suspension fat tire e bike with 26 inch tall wheels. Typically, these things definitely weigh more. Let's flip this thing around and show you the other side. Here's a peek at the chain ring. And around back it is running a Shimano Altus derailleur. No derailleur guard installed on this one, so careful not to knock your bike over and damage that. And we are running nine gears on the rear cassette. Seven is a pretty typical number we see on there, so we should have some pretty good gearing ratios. And here's a closer look at the air shock on the horse link suspension on the rear. Looks like it is a 165L from Fast Ace. Taking a peek down from this way, we can see it is a Fast ace. So we'll feel that out in just a moment, but first let's toss this battery in here. If you want to charge it on the bike, you can. Here's your charge port. And now without further ado, let's go ahead and fire this display up. What are we working with here? Don't forget to turn your battery on. So I actually gotta drop the battery out to access this. So it would be possible for you to turn your, your battery off. And somebody couldn't turn it on without having the key. So now let's fire this display up. What are we working with? So we do have a color display. We get our battery readout here in the top left in terms of a five bar readout. We're sitting at two bars. Of course, five levels of pedal assist, which you can easily adjust here with these buttons on down to zero, up to five. There's a button here on the right to turn on and off the lights. Shows the lights on and dims the display just a little bit when you press that. And here's what the headlights looking like off in the distance here. Looks like this from the front. Turn that off and tap this other button. So this other button here shows you your trip, max speed, average speed, voltage of the battery, I always love to see that, so we are pretty low right now. 54.6 is max charge on a 48 volt battery, we gotta top that thing off. And then odometer, basic stuff. Then of course you can always access your advanced menus by pressing plus and minus, and it's some cryptic stuff, so you gotta have a manual to kinda know what you're doing here. Don't mess with this. Then I'm not, oh, that's the horn. <laughs> I was about to say, I'm not entirely sure what that button is. Horn. I was thinking it might be a nitrous switch or something. So to help give you an idea of the size of this bike, I am six foot five with an inseam of 34. The seat is on the minimum height. The step through frame makes it relatively easy to get on a 26 by four inch wide fat tire e-bike. These things are kind of large and in charge in general. Oh yeah, dude, feels nice. Gotta love that full suspension, man. Rear shock feels like it's tuned in just right. So with the seat on minimum height, Here's what I'm looking like sitting on this e-bike. And let's go ahead and bump that seat on up to maximum height, which puts the seat at about the handlebar height. Should make for a comfortable riding position. As mentioned, this is the step through. They also have the trapeze form of this bike. It has a little extra bar right here for a little bit more rigidity. This is probably fine for most people. And here's what I look like getting on this bike with seat on maximum height. So this actually feels like it fits me at six foot five. Here's where my pedal stroke would be and my approximate riding position. I have to get on my tippy toes a little bit to reach the ground, so this is actually perfect for me. So quite a bit of adjustability in the size of this bike. And of course, since it is step through, super easy to get on and off. Sometimes the traditional really high bar step over frame ones Makes it, you know, a little bit harder to get on and off since these bikes can be kind of heavy. And then uh, this one is, in theory, a little bit lighter with that carbon fiber frame. Definitely wouldn't call this a light bike though. 
<laughs> and as mentioned, a step through frame with rear suspension is relatively uncommon. A lot of times they have that shock and all that system mounted up here with the high step over frame. So let's get a little bit closer of a look at this rear suspension, how well it moves. So it does have the horse to link four bar rear linkage suspension. Feels really plush, dude. Let's zoom in there just a bit more. If you're looking for a plush ride, this air shock feels like it could be the ticket. Front suspension is feeling soft and plush as well. A lot of travel there. Would be nice if there was, you know, some incremental adjustments rather than just either fully locked or fully open. So let's go ahead and fire this motor up. Let we'll us get right on it. Pedal assist, five, full throttle, ready to go. Yeah. So it does have a bit of a slow start feature built into that throttle. But if you blip it on and off quickly and check it out, we have it on kilometers per hour right now. See slow start, the ease is on for the first pass. But if you blip the brake and then hammer it, <laughs> dang dude. So it'll take us up to 61 kilometers per hour. 37.9 miles per hour, all right, all right. Of course that is with absolutely no load, so we gotta put my 200 pound body on there. Get this thing off a ride. Let's go. All right, dudes, let's take out the Hey Bye Hero for a ride. We'll fire up the Strava here so we can check our official range on this 48 volt, 18 amp hour battery pack built into this step through carbon fiber frame. Let's roll. And of course, the very first test we're gonna do on this e-bike is the 20% grade on Pedal Assist 5. Throttle only, I weigh 200 pounds. What kind of torque we working with on the Hero, baby? So we are rolling up this thing, absolutely no problem. Throttle only. Not pedaling at all. So pretty legit torque on this 1000 watt rear hub motor. But keep in mind, they do make this bike in a mid drive variation. So if you want the absolute most torque for hill climbing and towing capability, go for the mid drive. First observations on this e-bike, man, this suspension is feeling plush, man. I'm liking that rear horse link suspension. Not sure if we can turn up that screen brightness. I can see it just fine without my sunglasses on. If I throw my shades on here, makes it a little bit more dim, but I can still see it. So let's go ahead and crank this thing down to pedal assist zero and see how this feels on gear number one kind of rolling along. Obviously you get no pedal assistance when you're on pedal assist zero so you know you can kind of roll along here uh, you know you're gonna be losing a little bit of energy due to the uh, full suspension get a little bit of bob going on but if your battery does die you can get this thing home rolling about six miles an hour. So we are working with a torque sensor on this e-bike starting on gear number one pedal assist number one here from a stop. We just start pedaling a little bit it will uh, feel this power and I actually don't have to uh, put in any effort and it'll take me up to 23 miles an hour. So let's flip this on to up to gear number seven here. This feels like a natural cadence on pedal assist one. Cruising at, oh that's not miles per hour man, we're on kilometers per hour. We gotta switch that over. There we go, miles per hour. So it is indeed listed as a torque sensor for both the mid drive as well as the hub drive. So rolling out here, if I pedal really lightly on gear number seven, the torque sensor on this e-bike, uh, you really don't have to put a lot of power into it to get power. I'm actually uh, ghost pedaling here, not putting any power into it, just turning my legs lightly and it'll give me a little bit of power. And this will take me up to, on pedal assist one, it'll take me up to 17 miles an hour. Let's pump it on to pedal assist two. I'm not gonna change how much power I'm putting in at all. And this will still, uh, brings us up a little bit faster, about 20 miles an hour. And pedal assist two will take us all the way to 24 miles an hour, wow. So this bike's got some get up and go, man. And we'll bump it on to pedal assist three here, still uh, just barely putting in any power at all. And I'll start pedaling a little bit harder now, see what it'll bring me up to. So a torque sensor will give you power in proportion to how hard you're pedaling. I love that this bike has nine gears, so I can kind of, I can keep up with the cadence here. Wow, this is a Jaguar. Didn't even know I was going to be coming so fast on the Hero, baby. Man, this thing moves pretty quick, man. 26 miles an hour on pedal assist three. So let's feel out this suspension a little bit on this full suspension e-bike riding off-road. My goodness, yeah. This is a plush ride. If you're looking for a plush ride, this, this is the ticket right here, man. Big, oh, that front suspension did kind of bottom out there a little bit. So it is soft on the front suspension and there is a lock and open feature on this. And then that rear suspension, man, that, it's feeling nice and plush. So we'll just put on the pedal assist floor, get out here in traffic, bump it onto 
pedal assist 9 i'm barely putting in any power at all this torque tester is mighty sensitive it'll i'm hardly pedaling at all we're already it's showing 32 miles an hour on the dashboard up here we'll get out the gps in a minute when we put it on pedal assist 5. so we'll do a little bit of wing split here test the nimbleness of this electric bicycle so handlebars are wide it feels kind of you know like a mountain bike setup a little bit how the handlebars are kind of low and flat helps you for my height, I can kind of like, with the seat on max height, I kind of get up on the handlebars a little bit more of, I wouldn't say an aggressive riding position, but definitely helps you utilize your legs, get more forward. And then with your arms up on the uh, front fork, with your arms up on the front fork, it helps you uh, utilize the front suspension in unison with the rear suspension. So it feels like a really balanced bike and this carbon frame's feeling nice. So let's go ahead and test out the zero 20 acceleration on this pedal assist five throttle only GPS, my left hand, where'd it go? So it kind of eases on the power a little bit and then we feel that thousand watt motor kick in pretty hard right away 13 17 20 so pretty darn quick accelerating electric bicycle and the throttle will accelerate us beyond 20 miles per hour oh yeah dude <laughs> dude that front that suspension is springy i just got some air there dude oh nice bam bro oh scrape scrape i can hop that curb too and we'll bump that to pedal assist five, whip this thing around, get the GPS out, full throttle it and see. Uh, I'll pedal here just a little bit, bring it up to speed. Get a top speed run here. So I love that this has nine gears. I can actually keep up with the pedaling uh, at high speed. So showing 31 on the dash here, 32 on my GPS. They say 35 top speed. So 30, 34 on the GPS, 34 on board. And yeah, dude, this thing freaking cooks, man. 34 miles an hour. Pretty darn fast for an electric bicycle. Can I hit 35 on my GPS? Read out, give me 35, 35, there we go, dude. So yeah, dude, we're cooking, man. We might have, 36. Yeah, dude, this thing's not backing off. It says 37 on the screen. So this is definitely a high speed bike. And man, I just hit some hard bumps there with one hand on the handlebar. Briefly saw 37 up here. So good thing this has full suspension for that bump back there. Man, this bike likes to freaking cook, dude. Holy crap, I was not expecting that out of the hero. I mean, it's called the hero. <laughs> Why would I expect that out of the hero? So yeah, dude, the ability to put in a little pedaling there at high speeds, I'm sure that helped me get a little bit of speed there. Actually pretty darn impressive for a 48 volt system. Typically you need like at least 52 or 60 volts to start seeing 37 on the GPS, man. So beautiful day in the neighborhood here. We'll get out on the sand here, see how this thing does. We'll get out here and try it on the flat sand here in just a few. But first we're gonna pop down to gear number one, pedal assist five and try just going up this sand here, uh, off road. Oh yeah, dude. So this bike, you know, 1000 watt rear hub motor, very powerful bike. And then right here, typically this is very, 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 very bumpy. This full suspension, the rear horse link suspension in combination with that front fork. Uh, this bike feels super plush. And then it does have the rigid carbon fiber frame too, man. This is a very nice feeling bike for riding off road. Actually, let's go ahead and try and ride this thing down some stairs. So I actually have not even checked to see if I'll have enough clearance to do this. Oh yeah, dude, butter. If you do want the ultimate hill climbing and torque ability, you're gonna want the mid drive. <laughs> the hub drive just doesn't have enough power to kind of, well, maybe it does. I, I just don't have the skill. You'd want the mid drive for best hill climbing ability. Not that this is a bad hill climber because we saw what it did to the 20% great. Conquered it. So we're gonna get out here and try it on the sand in a few. Have to test the agility here a little bit. So for a fat tire e-bike with 26 inch tall wheels, uh, this actually it doesn't feel quite as heavy as some of the other ones I've tried. The carbon fiber frame does actually make a difference in the way. Dude, this is a danger, bro. Dude, popping wheelies and oncoming traffic on a Suron on a bike pad. So let's go ahead and see how this thing feels on the boardwalk and then take it on the sand. I'm gonna pop off uh, right about here. So we do have the 26 six inch tow wheels. I'm gonna bump it down a few gears and then get on the throttle and bump this thing on throttle only. So uh, we're we're skating through here just fine on throttle only, not pedaling this thing at all. Holding about six miles an hour. I'm gonna start pedaling it here just a little bit to keep the momentum going. So typically, you know, all wheel drive or mid drive is pretty much the strongest combination you can have for riding on the flat sand. But 
most bikes simply can't do this, especially, you know, if you only have like 20 inch tall wheels. So we're doing pretty good out here. We're running on through, see how it does. Get down here a little closer to the water, stay on the full throttle, see how the controller and the battery hold up on this thing. So throttle only down here. We can pick up a little bit more speed, holding about 16 miles an hour. And we're gonna go ahead and turn off and pedal our way back on to safety. So just putting in just a little bit of power here, holding about 10 miles an hour. Pretty good electric bike for riding on the sand. As expected, I mean, <laughs> we were hitting 35, 36, 37 miles an hour earlier. And on the boardwalk, feels excellent. So it actually does feel like the torque sensor is breaking in. It doesn't feel quite as aggressive as it did like when I first got on it. So I'm running it on uh, pedal assist two now and it seems a little bit gentler. Maybe I've just acclimated to the power myself. Yeah, this is pedal assist five now and I'm I'm just barely pedaling and it's it's not it's holding me at about 11 I'll put in a little bit more power and yeah, now it feels like it's working like a proper torque sensor. So maybe there's just a little bit of a break-in period there. Yeah, it's making me work for it a little bit now. I gotta actually press on these pedals, man. Get a, get a little exercise in here. How about that? So we gotta go try the California incline, test the brakes. Let's see if we can do this without dying. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, we're, we're rolling. I don't want here. Whoa. I should shift out a few gears. I gotta pedal this a little bit. So now what we're gonna do is run it up the California incline. The top of that hill is 85 feet tall. Whoa, we're about to get ran over by this, this truck. And of course, we're not gonna run straight up that cliff. We're gonna take the 12% California incline and rolling into the loop-de-loop -loop here. We'll downshift a few gears and do throttle only from a complete stop. Getting rolling here three miles an hour. Oh man, lost my balance a little bit. So it has enough to power us up on throttle only here on the loop-de-loop -loop section, which is a little bit steeper than the main California incline. And of course, we'll give these hydraulic brakes a test at the bottom. So whipping around this corner here, full throttle at the bottom, not pedaling at all. Six miles an hour, seven, nine miles an hour, 11 miles an hour. We've got some acoustics that have simply given up on the California incline. Not us. We are full throttle at 17 miles an hour, 18 miles an hour, 19 miles an hour, passing the cyclist, putting in a good effort there, 20 miles an hour, and still pulling, 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 21 miles an hour, still gaining a little bit. Looks like we're gonna top out right around 21, 22 miles an hour going up the California incline. And what better time to test the brakes than going down the California incline on full throttle? Dang, that's a lot of wind. Holy smokes, that's a lot of wind. Actually, there's too many people. We'll just stop here for a second, check out the uh, Lamborghini. So coming in pretty hot, about 18, 20 miles an hour, and oh yeah. <laughs> so the brakes on this bike are 180 millimeter rotors, hydraulic brakes, so they are smooth and linear. RSX levers feel nice. So let's say you're coming in hot, going about 20 miles an hour, need to come to a stop quickly. Go ahead and slam on our brakes here. A little bit of sand here. Yeah, dude, these are some good brakes on this bike. Good stopping power, linear feedback from the RS levers. Solid brakes. So we're gonna head on home, check the final range on this thing. We're sitting at four bars right now, but first let me leave you with my final thoughts on the Hey Bike Hero. So in general, I would say the torque sensor on this e-bike is a little bit sensitive. So it seems to be relatively power hungry. It's very eager to give you that power. So if you're looking for a torque sensor e-bike that's gonna give you a lot of power with relatively uh, an easy input, this is a good option for that. And probably the most significant thing about this e-bike is the horse link suspension with the step through frame. So it is a fat tire, 26 inch tall fat tire e-bike with full suspension, which is a relatively uh, uncommon thing to come across. So I always love the step through frames on these fat tire e-bikes because it makes them so much easier to get on and off of. And then of course, you know, you have the carbon fiber frame, which helps keep the weight of this bike down and also gives you a rigid frame. So considering the price of this e-bike, which you can see in the link below this video in the description box, it's really actually priced pretty darn well considering what you get right now during the campaign they have going on down there in the description box. I think the price may be going up in the future. So if you want the best price, check that link out. And also if you did buy through that link, it would help support my reviews here on Tail Happy TV. And I greatly appreciate your support. In general, it seems like a pretty beast mode e-bike. We're showing four bars. Let's head on home, see what the final range is. <laughs> Just rolling back in the neighborhood here. Got some duckies crossing. <laughs> 
and we are showing almost 19 miles on the range hour 31 minutes ride time average speed 13.34 miles per hour and we are showing three out of five bars on the range meter here uh looking at the voltage readout it's reading 46 Point four volts. So probably a little bit of an optimistic three out of five bars. I'd say this battery is uh, definitely less than half charged at this point, but it's still got some pep in it for sure. So if you do want to grab one of these bikes, click on the link down below this video in the description box. That'll take you over to the official order page. It'll give you the best price and also help support my reviews on this channel. And I greatly appreciate your support. However, if this is not the electric bike for you, watch this video next. Catch you over there.